So <clears throat> let's, let's back up for a second uh, and, and talk about some of the history of building automation and how we got to where we are today because it helps people understand this, this whole open protocol thing a little bit better. If you rewind the clock 15, 20 years, all the major manufacturers out there had a proprietary protocol. And a proprietary protocol meant that once they got their foot in the door on a the job, they were forever locked in with this customer. There was no using anybody else because nobody else could talk to what they wanted. Well, you get to that point, obviously, the manufacturers of these big proprietary networks have no desire to see this cash cow go away because it's been there and been a great revenue generator for them for a long time. Well, march forward a few years, a decade or two, and now there's a big pressure, there's a lot of pressure on because owners are tired of being locked in and they want an open protocol. So what really bubbled to the surface were two ways to do this, BACnet and LAN. Now LAN, and the difference between the two is LAN is a hardware-based integration solution. I can go buy a LAN chip from the Echelon Corporation and plug it into a circuit board. Hey, guess what? I'm open protocol. I can speak on an open network. I'm LAN compatible. And you'll notice if you look, most of the major equipment manufacturers, that's the route they chose to go first. Why? It was simple. It didn't cost them a lot of money. And they could jump on the bandwagon and say, hey, I got open protocol. Right? Because now I just stick a communication card in and there we go. Well, the difference is BACnet is a software-based integration platform versus a hardware-based integration platform. BACnet, as we all know, is written, sponsored, and supported by ASHRAE. ASHRAE is kind of the governing body of what we all do in the world for a living. Well, ASHRAE, anytime you're going to make decisions by committee or consensus, right, it doesn't happen real fast, it takes a while, but eventually the industry starts to move in that direction. And once BACnet really kicked into its own, in the early 2000s, its rapid acceptance rate has grown at an exponential path, not only across the US, but across North America and across the world. BACnet is the accepted communication standard for how we do things now. Now, with that information behind us, um, let's talk about proprietary objects. One of the ways that manufacturers of proprietary systems still try to bring some value, and I'm not saying it's not of some value to some people, but one of the selling points they try to give is, you know, well, if you integrate our system with our product, then you can see all this other little extra goodies. I'll give you one particular example of that. Um, you might be able to read the sump oil bearing temperature on a centrifugal chiller. Okay, that's nice, maybe I can, and that's kind of a neat little piece of information, but the bottom line is if that machine still goes offline, I still got to roll a truck to send a guy out there to push the reset button. Okay, it's not something I reset on, on a daily basis remotely. So you have to look at these proprietary objects and are they really of any intrinsic value to the end user, the end owner, and the customer? And a lot of times they're not. They're just kind of glitz for somebody to hang their hat on and say, yeah, we can do all this. Our perspective with BACnet is to adhere to the BACnet ASHRAE 135 standard, top to bottom, front to back, by the letter of it. That being the case, we don't have any proprietary objects. And the easiest way to tell whether a manufacturer is really worth his salt, and I mentioned this before, in the BACnet world there's something called a PIC statement. And a PIC statement is essentially says, if you look at my controller, you'll be able to read these points and you'll be able to write to these points. That information should be available in a public domain format. And if you can go on a manufacturer's website and find their PIC statements and look at them and see that they don't have any proprietary objects, then you know that you are playing with a company that truly adheres to the BACnet standard without proprietary objects. So I realize that's a kind of a history lesson, but I thought I wanted to bring it forward so you all understood the background of how we got to where we are.